Two, three, four. Run up your engines! A lot of people are looking for fast, zippy SUVs. Well, here's an 07 Acura RDX Turbo all-wheel drive, top of the line. Well, this one's 13 years old, still runs like a charm. The Acura speed and handling is still Honda's pretty much legendary reliability, especially in the past, 13 year old one like this. Now they weren't giving these things away 13 years ago. This was a $37,000 car because it's a fully loaded one. But for that 37 grand, you got a lot. Check under the hood. It's got a four cylinder, intercooled, IV tech, turbocharged engine that puts out 240 horsepower. Obviously it's holding up, this baby doesn't burn oil. Still runs like a scalded ape, even though it's 13 years old. It's not that miserly on the gasoline. This particular one, if you drive it slow, gets about 18 in the city and 22 on a highway. Because yes, you pay for speed and for a reasonably large sized vehicle. Now this is the fully loaded one, all wheel drive. Check the interior out, black one. Nice leather seats, 13 years old. They're still holding up. And check this out. The armrest isn't ripped yet. It's leather, but it's better than a lot of them. It's not ripped. And of course, being a Honda product, start right up first time. This one's got a killer stereo system. Oh, the sat nav, everything. Automatic transmission that's pretty bulletproof on this model. Got the sunroof. Needs servicing, but that's what it's here for. I'm gonna be doing that. And this baby's turbocharged, so it's got a turbo boost gauge on it. And as we check out the back seat, might help if we unlock it. And as we check out the back seats, got a reasonable amount of room. Now it is older and more base, so you check out here. It doesn't have a special rear air conditioning unit in it. That's kind of a minus on this car. Killer stereo, there's more speakers back here. Even more inside here, a killer sound system. And lots of leg room. I got the front seat back the whole way and there's still plenty of room back here. We get back outside, it's got a nice luggage rack on the top. We'll pop the trunk. It's got a reasonable size trunk plus, be an SUV, you can pop the seats down and carry a reasonable amount of stuff in this thing. Also has nice dual exhaust. No, they really don't make enough noise for me. Now you can hear under the hood a little clicking. Well, it's kind of normal for these things as they age. It runs perfectly fine, but with over 100,000 miles on it, these Honda engines often make a little bit of noise. This particular one, a lot of that is the injectors clicking a little bit, but let's see how it runs. Okay, we'll step on the gas then gets up and goes. And even though it's 13 years old, corners great. That's the thing about these Acuras, they're known for cornering. Stops on a dime and being all wheel drive, it's great in all kinds of weather. These things are pretty solid made. Still has the original struts all around. It doesn't ride bad at all with over 100,000 miles. These are solid built cars. You paid for them. They weren't giving them away. But a used one can be a pretty decent car if it was taken care of. Honda makes pretty good all-wheel drive system. And this thing is killer. Especially if you live in mountains or where it snows and rains a lot. You don't mind a high price. They're excellent vehicles. And it is the first turbocharged one that Acura made, but it's not a GDI, it's just a turbo. So it kicks in when you wanna go fast and it doesn't. If you're not, it didn't cause that much excessive wear in this baby, it still doesn't burn any oil and it's 13 years old. I can't say I go for the stupid wind deflector to keep bugs off the windshield. I mean, I think that kind of takes away from the look of the car. But when you consider the luxury of getting one of these cars, you don't mind spending this kind of money Hey, there's nothing wrong with one of these. And like I said, sure, they're not great on a gas mileage, but you don't buy a fast, racy little SUV and expect to get great gas mileage. That just doesn't happen. Even the rating systems here are a bit false. Because I have customers with late model cars that have four cylinder GDI turbos, and they may be rated high for gas mileage, but the way they drive them fast, they get just as poor, if not worse, gas mileage than this thing. Turbos. Theoretically get better gas mods, you pump it all the time, make them spool up and spin fast and accelerate quickly, they're gonna get bad gas mods. That's just pure physics. So really, if you want a fast, great handling, mid-size SUV, there's nothing wrong with these Acuras. They are solid built cars. You don't mind the price. Now my customer bought this used for a son. He was happy with the price and it runs like a scalded ape. So he's totally happy with the car. Of course, he didn't fork out the $37,000 for it either. He's like me. So if you're one of those people that just feels they have to have an SUV with all wheel drive, nothing wrong with these. 
Now the four cylinder ones, they don't have as much power as the big old V6 ones. The V6 ones did have a tendency of burning the transmissions out in the all wheel drive Acuras. But this is a four cylinder version and I haven't seen any real problems with the transmissions in these. It was mainly in the ones with the V6 engines that had more power that burnt the all wheel drive system out faster. So now you know the truth about an Acura RDX. So you can make a wise decision yourself and not just basing your purchase on a whim that, oh, it's fast and it looks good. Now you know a little bit more. And here's some bonus questions and answers. And says, hey, Scotty, what do you think of a 2014 Toyota Camry SC Sport 4880 with about 200,000 miles on it? They're excellent vehicles. It's only six years old. It's got 200,000 miles on it. If you can find some history of that car, it could be a very good deal because I'm assuming a bunch of that mileage was highway drive. And as I've said numerous times, highway is equivalent to 10% of the city. So 200,000 miles highway is equivalent to 20,000 city. In that case, it could be a very good car, but it's got 200,000 miles on it. Car with 200,000 miles, it's not worth five grand. I mean, I've had people buy cars that cost twice what that car costs and brand new. And yeah, they got used ones for five grand that had close to 200,000 miles. And they were Toyotas. One was a Toyota Sequoia, a big old thing. So, you know, originally it was a lot higher price and they paid it five grand used. That, I would pay less if a mechanic checks it out and says it's in good shape because of the mileage. That's a lot of miles on a car. It doesn't matter if it's highway, it's still a lot of miles. You're not getting any guarantee. So if you can find a little more history to see where that mileage put on its highway miles, yeah, it could be a pretty good car. I'd offer less though. Christoph 90 says, Scotty, I was looking at getting a vehicle. It's more family friendly. Saw the Buick Regal Torx. It has big discounts since it's discontinued with Opal being sold off, but it looks great to put family in with style. What are your thoughts on this wagon? Don't buy it. You do not want to buy an Opal in the United States. I'm assuming you're in the United States because they're expensive to get parts for and hardly anybody knows how to work on them. I've had it happen so many times in the past. You know, Cadillac used to sell the Katera. That was a Opal made in Germany. And here in the United States, the Cadillac mechanic said, that's a German car. We can't work on it. It's an Opal. We don't know how to fix it. Then you go to the German mechanics and they say, that's a Cadillac. We don't work on those cars. Don't buy it be a waste of money. Going to be hard to get parts for. Hardly anybody knows how to work on those German cars here in the United States. Don't buy it. It doesn't matter what the price is. The price is cheap because nobody wants them anymore. They understand that they are a German car, but sold in the United States. Big mistake. Do not buy a car like that. I don't care how much they discount it. It's still going to be a ton of money, and it's not worthwhile to get something like that being a German car in the United States. Dwayne 21 says, Scotty, I got a 2000 Impala 3.8 liter V6 Series 2 with 107,000 miles. It's a hard time running at idle. Is there anything I can do to help it? Yeah, well, of course, you know, tune it up. If you haven't changed the spark plug, the air filter, the fuel filter, change all the obvious things first. Then check for vacuum leaks. With it idling, listen for sucking, spray a little carburetor spray around, and if it revs up, you know there's a leak there that's sucking it in. Now, if it's not that, I got a video, make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. Two cans of spray cleaner, you clean the MAF sensor, you clean the throttle. A lot of times that'll fix it if it isn't any of those other problems. But always start basic. With that kind of mileage on and it's what, uh, 20 years old, make sure the spark plugs are good and the air filter's clean, the fuel filter's clean. Always start obvious on an old car and work your way up if needed. Willie wonders, wondrously says, I got an 08 Nissan Altima. 2.5 liter. It's shifting like crap and it says PO468 for the trouble code. Secondary line pressure too low. I see it all the time on those things. Those things have those horrible CVT transmissions. Now, pray that changing the fluid in it makes it work better. Drain it out. If you see it's all dirty and cruddy, you didn't see how many miles you have on it, but if you got high mileage, pray that helps. Because if it doesn't, odds are you're going to need a new transmission. Those CVT transmissions on those are those Jatco crap wagon transmissions. And often when they go out, they'll trip that code, secondary line pressure too low, because internal things are breaking and it's just crapping out. But sometimes if it gets clogged up, the secondary pressure is too low because the feeds to it get clogged up with crud and putting in new fluid can help. So pray that helps, because if not, Eh, you know, it's an 08, it's 12 years old, odds are the CVT is going out. Now, let's say sometimes it works okay, sometimes it doesn't. My advice would be trade it in, get rid of it as soon as possible, rather than putting a bunch of money into that thing. If changing the fluid doesn't help, I would just say goodbye to the car. I wouldn't put that kind of money. You're going to put four or five grand at least into that stupid thing, and it's not worth it.
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.